This is BTV Business Television. Hello, I'm Taylor Tone. And I'm Jessica Katrachuk. Welcome to BTV Business Television. This week on BTV, we celebrate the show's 25th anniversary on air and share some compelling investment opportunities. Our project belongs to a handful of really sizable and scalable gold projects in North America. We are at the intersection point of both sports and media. More copper discoveries are needed, and that's exactly the business Kodiak is in. All this and more ahead on BTV Business Television. The Timmins Gold Camp in Ontario, Canada has produced upwards of 70 million ounces of gold in the last century. Mayfair Gold believes their location is only one characteristic that makes this a compelling opportunity for investors. I've been in the mining business for about 27 odd years. Over that time, I've built two mines, a platinum mine in South Africa and a diamond mine in the Northwest Territories of Canada. So we've had some very favorable M&A transactions happen, which have provided shareholders attractive liquidity opportunities. Many of the people working uh, at Mayfair Gold have been associated with my previous companies. They're very experienced. They understand what our strategic objectives are. Um, and that's reflected in the results that we've achieved at Mayfair over the last 30 months. Located in the prolific Abitibi Gold Belt in Ontario, Canada, the Fen Gibb project sits on approximately 4,800 square hectares, 75% of which remain unexplored. Security of title in Canada, of course, is absolute, and no one's going to expropriate the deposit. Second, Fen Gibb sits right on Highway 101 with access to renewable grid power, and of course, an abundance of labor and support services. Third, Fengib is an open pitable deposit. It has broad disseminated gold mineralization, um, which reduces both the development and operating risk. We've owned Fengib for 30 months. In that time, we've drilled over 150 kilometers and we've grown the deposit by over 70% to three and a half million ounces in the indicated resource category. At $2,000 per ounce, the value in the ground of that three and a half million ounces is a massive $7 billion worth of gold in the ground. Now we're continuing to drill at Fengeb. We've guided that we expect that our ongoing drilling will grow the resource to more than 4 million ounces. And that would peg the value of the gold in the ground at about $8 billion. We've modeled our deposit on a 50 degree pit slope, the three and a half million ounces. If we were able to steepen that to 55 degrees, then that will increase the gold uh, in the deposit to about 3.7 million ounces. Digby ESG helps mining companies measure, manage and disclose their ESG or environmental, social and governance ratings, giving greater transparency for those evaluating mining data. The, the rating was double B, in fact, the whole way through uh, from the corporate and also across their project. One particular thing that I thought was interesting was the uh, with their metallurgical work, they're looking to see how they can remove themselves from the cyanide processing uh, circuit. I think the efforts by the company to secure hydroelectric power uh, is clearly important and beneficial. We're Canada's first, and as far as I know, Canada's only net zero gold project. In the first two years of our operation, we measured all of our greenhouse gas emissions, and we've purchased offsets by funding solar panel installation across Canada. Patrick Evans' unique perspective on their future is echoed by his excitement for the industry going forward. What excites us is when we see young graduates come up uh, into Mayfair uh, to support us at Fen Gibb, uh, giving us the opportunity to train them, uh, provide them with a future in the mining industry, which we think is critical. Of course, growing shareholder value um, is at the heart of it. That's why we're doing what we're doing, is to grow shareholder value, to deliver value for shareholders. With work commencing later this year on a pre-feasibility study, you can follow this net zero gold projects news at mayfairgold.ca.
Coming up on BTV, more companies to keep on your radar. We have multiple gold and copper mines around us, all the infrastructure in place. You can work year round and you can reach the MPD project literally right off the highway. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. After 40 years as a successful gold explorer and developer, Gold Terra's chairman and CEO still loves the mining business and can't turn away from a golden opportunity. In this case, it's the prolific area in the Yellowknife mining camp, including the former con mine. The mine is just part of a dominant district scale land position that Gold Terra has assembled. One that it believes has a lot to offer. We have accumulated a property that is over 900 square kilometers, basically covering a strike length of 70 kilometers. By ourselves, we own 100% of the mineral tenure or mineral rights along the Campbell Shear. Campbell Shear is the plumbing system for that gold deposit that was mined from 1935 to 2003. 14 million ounces produced between 16 to 22 gram gold. That's a target. That's where you can find five million ounces more or 10 million ounces more. So when you look at our land position and you look at the potential of being the only explorer in the area, it's tremendous. Gold Terra's immediate efforts are focused on the con line, where it's reaping the benefits of existing infrastructure and an ideal location. There's a lot of benefits of being in Yellowknife. You're in town, you got 20,000 people where everybody goes home at night. You don't have to build a camp, you don't have to feed them, you don't have to transport them. That translates to operating costs. In addition to being well situated, Gold Terra's prospects are further enhanced by a seasoned management team with an impressive track record. I think when people invest in Gold Terra, they invest in people that can drive the process of finding gold, developing gold, producing gold, creating jobs. So we're not just an, a grassroots exploration, we're an advanced exploration group with all the background to put it in production. I've built three mines. I know how to take a project from exploration all the way to production. I've done it. I was the founder of Detour Gold. We went from IPO to production in six years. We found 30 million ounces when we worked Detour. And uh, the company got sold for five billion. Today, Detour is the largest gold mine in Canada. Michael Gray, who's a partner with Agentis Capital and a geologist, sees a positive road ahead for Gold Terra. The reason we focused on Gold Terra was it's a brownfields and greenfields opportunity. It, it's an entire gold belt that's been uh, uh, put under one roof of a junior mining company with capable management, but it's got past production, the second highest grade gold belt in Canada. And the property that Golterra has, has 6.1 million ounces of past production. That this is an opportunity you don't see very often in a junior mining company. We think we have one of the best story in Canada. Uh, it's high grade, it's sustainable, it's in town, it's cheap to operate, cheap to drill. Look, I put my own money in this project. I own 6.5 million share. Why is that? Because of the potential. Because the untested and un underexplored targets that there is. Gold Terra intends to have an updated mineral resource estimate following its deep drilling program that's currently in progress. A quote from CNBC earlier this year stated, there isn't enough copper in the world and the shortage could last until 2030. Fueled by challenging supply streams from South America and higher demands to power the green economy, Kodiak Copper might be in the right place at the right time. The supply pipeline for copper is very weak at the moment, simply because there was no major copper discovery for over a decade. And that is in a scenario where we see very strong demand from the Green Revolution. 
So no doubt more copper discoveries are needed and that's exactly the business Kodiak is in. Chris Taylor, former CEO of Great Bear Resources, has done this before, taken a junior mining company and propelled it forward. In the case of Great Bear, it was recently acquired by Kinross for over 1.3 billion US dollars. Kodiak has drilled over 50,000 meters into the MPD project in central BC and we're very pleased with what we've seen so far. And what this is is a number of copper porphyry centers and what we see is mineralization that extends right to surface, uh, big envelopes of mineralized material and multiple centers that we're exploring right now. Fortunately for Kodiak, we're located in southern British Columbia and a characteristic of many British Columbia porphyry deposits is, th is that they also have a significant gold component. So what we expect to see with most of our drilling is good copper values and good gold values. It is a pivotal time for our company. We made our first high-grade discovery at the gate zone and are now taking the same approach and testing multiple other targets with the potential to make several other discoveries. A strong attribute for this project is the accessible location in an established mining district. So our geologists, they stay in Merit. Merit has all the infrastructure access that we need for the support of the project, and it's very operationally effective to reduce per drilling costs. So basically, more of the money that we raise as a company ends up as drilled meters instead of just helicopter fuel or something like this. For some, like this mining analyst at Cormark Securities, it was not surprising that Kodiak found a discovery where others had previously drilled. The whole thesis here in, 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 at MPD is that while there's been a lot of historic drilling do, been done, uh, most of it was shallow within you know, 200 meters of surface. And what Chris Taylor, Claudia, and, and the geologists recognized early on was that shallow drilling looked to have only tested what, what would be interpreted as the top of a porphyry system and never really went deep enough to get into the guts of these systems. And so one thing that led to the gate zone discovery was that Kodiak went in and, and put the drills and drilled a lot deeper. And sure enough, that thesis played out. They hit the gate zone at depth. Copper, gold, location and experience all point to a positive outcome. It is an established mining area. We have multiple gold and copper mines around us. So all the infrastructure in place, you can work year round and you can reach the MPD project literally right off the highway. Once you have a good exploration thesis in play and you begin to see that success as you test new ideas, that's what really gives you that passion for discovery, the fire in your belly that leads you to want to find more. Taking a page out of Great Bear's playbook, Kodiak is focusing on exploration and discovery prior to putting out an initial resource. You can follow all the updated news by going to KodiakCopperCorp.com. Stay tuned for more compelling investment opportunities. The results of the PA deliver on all fronts. Attractive economics with great return. Sizable project, close to 300,000 ounces a year. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. If you were to design a gold exploration company from scratch, it would probably go something like this. Start with a multi-million ounce gold resource, add in a world-class location, sprinkle in some excellent infrastructure and robust financing, and there you go, you've got Banyan Gold. We acquired the Ormac property in 2017 by optioning it from then Alexco and Victoria Gold. I knew about it because of my long history in the Yukon. I knew about the prospector that took out some material that was about two ounces uh, per ton right from the surface. I purchased the alluvial assets way back in 2013. I knew it had lots of potential for gold. We did the hard work to put together a geological model, and that's really been the basis of the success that we've had in, in building this resource. CEO and President Tara Christie believes that Banyan has barely scratched the surface of Ormac's gold potential. 
Ormac is a very large property. It's over 173 square kilometers. We've explored with drilling less than 5% of it. Even soil sampling, we still have a tremendous amount of the property which we have to do green fields exploration on. We were really pleased to come out this spring with our 6.2 million ounce gold resource. That's adding over 2 million ounces in one year with 50,000 meters of drilling. It really shows just how robust this deposit is. Banyan is looking to add even more ounces to the Ormac resource before the year is finished. We've already drilled 25,000 metres of our Phase 1 program. We're about to launch into our Phase 2 program. We've been doing a tremendous amount of soil sampling. We'll have the results of our metallurgical work. It should be a catalyst-filled year, building off our first and, and primary catalyst of our resource update. Despite their location in Canada's far north, Banyan's infrastructure allows them to operate for 10 months of the year, giving them a distinct advantage over their competitors in the region. The perception that exploration in the Yukon is seasonal doesn't apply to Banyan. We have exceptional infrastructure we have all-season roads. We're just 50 kilometers from the community of Mayo. We have cell phone service. We are exceptionally well set up. So working year-round is something that we know how to do, and it's going to let us advance this project far more rapidly than projects in remote locations. Strong finances and deep-pocketed partners and stakeholders are also helping Banyan quickly and methodically advance through the various stages of development. There are not very many projects worldwide which have the scale of resource that we have. Banyan is fully financed for our 2023 exploration plans and at the end of the year we'll have a very strong treasury to see us into 2024. We benefit from having some very solid shareholders um, with Victoria Gold, Franklin and Fidelity along with other institutional investors. Banyan's valued about $10 per ounce in situ. That uh, gives lots of upside opportunity for new shareholders. Michael Gray of Agentis Capital also sees plenty of upside potential, enough to turn Ormac into a tier one asset. The Eagle Mine is now in production, Yukon's biggest ever hard rock gold mine. And it really de-risks things for a company like Banyan when you have the road and, uh, and power infrastructure right there. And the thing that really stands out to me is the scale of the mineralization. Within three years, they've gone from zero to 6.2 million ounces documented in resources. This doesn't happen very often, so it's very, very notable. The good news keeps coming for Banyan. They've discovered continuous mineralization, which will add even more ounces to the 6.2 million that the company announced earlier this year. You may not have noticed, but Nighthawk Gold is on a roll. Ever since company president and CEO Kavan Salehi took over the helm of this gold developer in 2021, big steps have been taken to advance its massive multi-million ounce Colmenach Gold project located in Canada's Northwest Territories. The momentum from the past two years has also helped Nighthawk reach a key milestone, the reporting of its maiden preliminary economic assessment. The results of the PA deliver on all fronts. Attractive economics with great return, sizable project, close to 300,000 ounces a year uh, production profile, uh, and a property that's very scalable and we see a lot of opportunity to further expand on that, both in terms of mine life and also throughput as well. The PEA is both a shot of good news for Nighthawk and an early indicator that Colomac could become a Tier 1 Canadian Gold project. Our project belongs to a handful of really sizable and scalable gold projects in North America. Our current global resource base is just over 5 million ounces, 90% of which is indicated, so there's really high confidence in, in the resources that are sitting there as well. The property is just shy of 1,000 square kilometers. We have close to 30 targets that we've identified that have gold showings, some of which we don't even have names for right now. When I think about this from an exploration point of view, there's lots of upside. Beyond the potential of a growing resource is a new management team with a dynamic approach. I think if you look at what we've achieved over the past two years with this management team, I think that's exceeded a lot of people's expectations. And I think there's a lot more of that to come. Ryan Hanley, Director of Mining Research at Laurentian Bank Securities, is among those who believe that Nighthawk is on track for big things. They've done a, uh, an excellent job of advancing the project. 
There aren't too many other established exploration development companies out there that have a production profile of over 250,000 ounces a year, uh, as Nighthawk outlined in the recent PEA. So I would say the size of the project definitely sets them apart from uh, the majority of the peer group. Uh, the second point I'd probably uh, focus on is valuation. Nighthawk trades at an average of about $15 an ounce uh, on an EV per ounce basis. Peers are probably closer to about the $50 mark, uh, and I would say the peers that are located in top tier mining jurisdictions like, uh, like Canada are probably closer to the $60 to $75 an ounce mark. So there's definitely a bit of a valuation discrepancy. Nighthawk will look to parlay this potential with some ambitious plans in the coming months. We're well funded for this year. We've started our drill program uh, and we're planning on doing anywhere from 20 to 25,000 meters of drilling. Uh, looking at some of the higher priority greenfield targets uh, is something that we're looking at this year as well, with the hopes of uh, eventually finding the next multi-million ounce deposit. It all points to a promising future for Nighthawk. Look, we have a great uh, project with great economics. Uh, it's got size. It's got scalability. I think this is a project that can produce gold for generations to come. The company remains on a fast track toward a feasibility study and ultimately a construction decision expected within the next two and a half years. Stay tuned for more investment gems coming your way on BTV. We are at the intersection point of both sports and media with a very unique product offering. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. iGaming market is taking off and over in Canada, the province of Ontario has become the country's first regulated gaming market last year and already stands as the fifth largest market in both the US and Canada. The opportunity for growth is immense, and this next company has a strategy to build its brand nationwide. We are at the intersection point of both sports and media um, with a very unique product offering in a very fast-moving, growing market. We're providing something more than just a wager. We're providing with analysis and insights into that player or that game or that series that you wouldn't find elsewhere. In our business, you attract by bonuses or giving some, you know, a specific dollar amount to get someone in. That's an acquisition tool. What we offer is some acquisition, but also this incredible retention tool that retains our, our players over the long run. Couple that to North Star's focus on the Ontario market, and it's easy to see why their product is hard to beat. We are local. All of our content is focused on Ontario-based teams. We're extremely nimble as it relates to things that are going on in our market. And you can see that in all of our marketing and our content creation and how we're talking to our players day in, day out. An exclusive agreement with Torstar, publisher of the Toronto Star, helps funnel players through contextual online ads, all with direct links to bet slips. All third-party content platforms are regulated, registered, and include news, sports, insights, and articles. We have a really premium iGaming environment as well. We're adding another 500 games this year. We've got something for everybody. Playtech, which is a global leader in iGaming, B2B software and platforms, invested in our company uh, and continues to support our initiatives in Ontario and beyond. They support us on the platform, they support us around managed services and customer support, they support us around mobile technology and development. With solid partners like Torstar and Playtech on board, Northstar is looking to grow. The company recently acquired Slapshot Media and its brand, Spreads.ca, to take it to the next level. Ontario is about one-third of the overall market in Canada. So as the business starts to expand and other markets become regulated, the business will expand. So if you think about it, we have Ontario, which is an incubated, regulated business, and we've built a product for that, and we've acquired a company with Spreads.ca that will give us access to the rest of Canada. And that market is significant, over $6 billion, and growing at a, a significant rate. 
Until more Canadian markets become regulated, Northstar will continue to build its player base and brand awareness so it's ready to rapidly expand into these new markets. We compete hard in the local market. We are a very unique product. We've got a very strong management team. And I think that premium service, the value that we create, will bring us a tremendous amount of prosperity and growth. Northstar went public this past March and has already raised over $22 million to date. Thanks for joining us today for BTV. I'm Jessica Kasherchak. And I'm Taylor Tone. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Business Television for the latest interviews on companies in the markets. And until next time, may your portfolio prosper.